So you've completed your aerial mapping survey with your drone, and you've processed the imaging and created your data sets. And now you're ready for feature extraction. Today I'm going to be using Carlson Photo Capture powered by PixElement to perform feature extractions using their survey canvas. This is a very powerful tool that you can use to extract features from the photogrammetry data sets. Here I have a project for a shopping center that I'm doing, and my client isn't necessarily looking for a very high accuracy survey. They just wanted a general idea of where their features are located. And so I use the drone to fly the site, and I'm going to be using the survey canvas on photo capture to extract where the curbs, the gutters, the parking stripes, the buildings, and all other prominent features are located. Since I don't need this to be very high accuracy, I'm able to do this virtually on the computer, saving lots of time and manpower out in the field. Rather than having someone survey this for me for several days, I can survey this on the survey canvas in a few hours. In the photo capture menu, you'll go to sites, you'll pick the project that you want to work on, so I'm working on the water side, and then I'll select survey canvas. This will load up your project and allow you to do feature extraction. On the left hand side you have some viewer options and on the right hand side you have your different extraction options. What I like to do is start out by identifying the layers that I'm going to be using for this project. By clicking on this tool right here, you're going to open up the Drawing Manager. And in the Drawing Manager, you can then add layers. So this first layer, I'm going to call it Curb. I can then change the color. So let's say I want my curb to be, I don't know, green. Yeah, green is good, so we'll use this, this green. If I click on these three dots, I can then identify the width of my line or the size of the text that's on this layer. I'm just going to leave this as the default. The little eye here says if we want to view the layer or if we want to hide it, I'm going to keep it on view. And the trash can means to delete the layer. I'll add in another few layers. We'll do a gutter layer and blue is fine. We'll do a sidewalk layer and we'll make this yellow. I'll add a building layer. We'll make this red. I'll add another layer. We'll call it parking for our parking stripes. We'll make this magenta. We'll add another layer. We'll call it utilities. And we'll make this layer orange. And the last and final layer, we'll call it ground shots. And I'll make it white. Okay, now that we've created all the layers, we're going to take a look at some of the viewing options and figure out which one we like best. Down at the bottom you have dense and surface, and dense is just the point cloud, so if I turn on the dense and I turn off the surface, you'll see that you just have millions and millions of points. This can be useful for trying to identify specific locations, but if you're trying to do a general feature extraction, then you're going to want to use both the dense point cloud and the surface. So by turning on the surface, this turns on the DSM, which stands for Digital Surface Model, and now you've got both sets of data. Now let's take a look at the different features that we can extract. Over at the top here, we have just a single point. Down here we have polylines, which is a collection of points that are connected. Next we have polygons which is a closed figured polyline. This is good for buildings or if you're trying to segregate certain areas. Next we have generate grid, which is really good for generating a large amount of points in a specific area. We'll use this option for ground shots later on. And the final one is generating a tin, which I'm not even gonna talk about that in this video. I'll be making a separate video talking about surfaces and tins, but you are able to do that here in photo capture. So let's start easy. Let's just create a single point. So I'm gonna click on point and that's gonna ask me what I want my layer to be. So I'm going to just select my utility layer and then it's going to ask me for a code. This code is going to identify what kind of feature we are extracting. So let's take a look at the site here. I'm going to come down over here and I see I've got a catch basin right here. So I'm going to code this CB for catch basin. I'll select the center of the catch basin and now the catch basin is created. We have the northing, the easting and the elevation coordinates uh, as well as the layer and the code. If I click back on the point, I can select more features. So if I come down over here, I see I have another catch basin, so I'm gonna select there. I have a catch basin over here, so I'll select that. Here's another one right here. Over here, I see I've got a whole bunch of manholes, so I'm gonna continue to use the utility layer, but I'm gonna change the code to MH, which stands for manhole. Over here, MH, and then I'm gonna add it. And now I can select the center here, and there you go, MH for manhole. Right here right here, over here, down here, and it's that easy. You just select the point on the data set, it extracts the feature and creates 
coordinates, and then it assigns that point its code on its proper layer. Next, let's talk about polylines. Now, if you're doing a lot of work like I am, developed sites like this one, you're probably gonna be using the polyline command the most. It's a really powerful tool because it creates both lines and vertices, which is points. Photo Capture also allows you to add it into layers and give all the points their own codes. By selecting a polyline, you're going through the same exact process. You're gonna pick the layer that it needs to be on. So I'm gonna start with, let's just say sidewalk. And really, I don't want it to be sidewalk. I want it to be concrete, but you know what? I'm gonna change it. And I'm just gonna change it to concrete. There we go, I like that more. That way I can identify different pieces of concrete that aren't necessarily sidewalk using the same layer. I'll select polyline, and okay, now I've got my concrete layer. I want to go find some concrete. After I've identified the layer, same thing, I can put in a code. So my code is just going to be sidewalk, so SW for sidewalk. Now I have a few other options here. The first one is clamp to surface, and when this feature is on, what it's going to do is anytime I draw a line on this project, it's going to drape it over the surface. So it'll match um, and create as many points as possible on that polyline to match the surface elevation. This is really good for topographic surveying because then it creates a more accurate break line anytime you try to add features into the surface. This Distance will give us the actual distance, like a numerical value, anytime we stretch the polyline. It's not a bad idea to have, I'll keep that on. And measure angle does the same thing as measure distance. It gives us a numerical value anytime I pivot from one vertice to another. This is kind of annoying to me. I don't really care for that information, so I'm gonna leave that off. All right, if everything looks good, I'm gonna select the first point. It's gonna be right here. And then I'm gonna click here. And I'm just going to follow where the sidewalk is. I need to be pretty close, but not ridiculously close, since again, my client is just looking for a rough idea of where everything is at. And I don't have to click super close to each other, I can click kind of far away, and the software is automatically gonna be placing vertices for me along the surface, and that's going to provide us more information on the polyline. Okay, here we go. It's adding more detail for us. And I'm just finding areas that there's no tree coverage, no obstructions, very clear to see. All right, we're gonna click there, we're gonna move over, click here. And this looks like our ending point, so I'm going to click, and then I'm going to right click, and that is going to end our polyline. I can select the polyline and I can take a look and see what our distance is. I can change the codes for the vertices. There's a few other things that I can do. I can convert this into a polygon, which will take the last point and connect it with the first point. Not something we want to do in this situation. I can copy and shift it. This is great for offsetting the line. I'll show you a better example of this with the parking stripes. And then exporting the feature. If you're not looking to do a whole project, you just need to export one feature. You can just export this one specific line. I want to export an entire project, so I'm going to wait before I export. If you guys like this type of content, make sure you like this video and also hit that subscribe button so you're always notified anytime I release new content. Also check me out on Instagram and on LinkedIn if you want to see the behind the scenes to these YouTube videos or if you want to learn more about my professional career. All right, back to photo capture. Okay, I'm going to start up again the polyline and I'm going to select this point here and now we have successfully extracted the sidewalk that is made of concrete. Now let's do another feature. We're going to switch over from the concrete over to a curb. So I'll click on the polyline, I'll select the layer and I'll change it to curb and I'll change the code to BC for back of curb. Okay, I'll keep all the other settings the same and here's a small little island we can draw up our curb on. We'll start here and we'll just go around the curb mapping out this feature. It's literally as simple as dragging and clicking the location. It's not very difficult at all. And there we go, now we've drawn up this polyline and it is for the curb. I'll go ahead and click polyline again, switch the layer to gutter, and change the code to GU for gutter. By tilting up, I'm able to see uh, where the elevation is dropping and making sure that I actually hit that low point that'll be crucial for us when we create our surface. So clicking around here. There we go and closing it up right there. And now we've drawn up the curb and gutter. I noticed that I've got a fire hydrant right here in the center, so I can go back and collect that point. So I'll click on points, 
I'll change the layer to utilities and I'll change the code to HYD for hydrant. And all I have to do is just select the top of it. And there we go, we've extracted the fire hydrants location. Now let's extract some of the parking spaces in the parking lot using the polyline command. I'll go into polyline, select the layer, and we're going to pick parking. And I'm gonna call this stripe. Now I don't want to clamp this to the surface because I'm not trying to create as many vertices as possible. I'm just trying to show where the parking stripes are. So all I need is just one continuous line for when the line starts and ends in the parking lot. So I'll turn that off. We can keep the distance, that's fine. It's nice to have that information. So I'm going to just start this here and I'm gonna come down. Maybe I'll put an intermediate point right here. We'll come down some more, add another point here, go down just a bit more. Add a point here, and then all the way at the end. Okay, now I need to add polyline here, all the way down to here, and end the line. Now you'll probably realize there are so many lines that need to be added, and this is going to be extremely time consuming to sit there and select lines and add them over and over again. But fear not, I have a shortcut for you. So you're going to select the line and then we're given some options and one of the options is copy and shift. By using the copy and shift command, we're able to then offset the line a certain distance in a particular direction. I'm gonna hit copy and I'm going to offset this 9.1 feet and I will offset it uh, at a negative 90 degrees which is gonna move it up and I'm gonna hit copy and as you can see, it is copying that line up and I can go as far up as I want. It's extremely convenient to do this and anytime you wanna adjust the lines, you're able to do so. So for example, this line right here, the line goes off just a little bit more than the other ones. So I can click here and just adjust it and put it exactly where it needs to be. Now I've got parking stripes that match exactly what's out in the field. So you've seen how we can extract points and polylines. Now let's do polygons. By selecting polygon, I can once again pick the layer. So let's do buildings. The code, I'm just gonna call it BD for building. Clamp to surface, I'm actually going to turn this one off because I don't want the points to go down to the ground. I want them to stay as high up along the roofs as possible. This to me is not going to impact my surface. It's more of a visual feature. The client just wants to know where the building is located. They don't necessarily care about its height and we know that it doesn't impact the surface. Perimeter just gives you the measurements around the perimeter of the building. So this could be nice to have. I'll turn it on. Area which gives you uh, how much square footage there is for the building. Also very important and I'm going to leave that on. And volume will give you the 3D volume of the object. I'm not too concerned with how much volume is in a building. Uh, maybe if I was doing a stockpile reporting, volume would be important, but for extracting the locations of buildings, we're not gonna need volumes. Okay, this looks good, and I'm just going to select the tops of the building. I'm just doing the canopy tops. I understand that you know sometimes we can go to the actual building corner, but once again, my project specifications just wants the building tops. Come all the way to the back. And there we go. Now if I select this building, I get some information regarding the perimeter and the area. The last and final tool that I wanna show you is the Generate Grid tool. This tool right here is great for simulating ground shots on an open field. You're able to simplify the point cloud, which has millions and millions of points, by reducing it down to an interval set points and making the data a lot more manageable. Here I've got just an open area and I want to create some ground shots here. So I'm gonna click on the Generate Grid I'll select the layer, so ground shots, and the code that I wanna use, I'll just say GS for ground shots. I have the option of clamping the perimeter to the surface, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's just more accurate data, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm setting the interval, and the default is 10 foot by 10 foot, which I think is pretty good. If you're looking for a tighter solution, if you want more points, then I would probably decrease this to five foot by five foot. That way you get a point every five feet. If you're looking for even less points and you just want an even more simplified surface, then set it to 25 feet. 10 foot for me is good, so I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I'll then just draw up a polygon of where I want these ground shots to come in. We'll just do something simple like this. And now it's going to generate the grid of ground shots for us. And it doesn't take very long. And there we go. Now we've got a point every 10 feet with X, Y, and Z coordinates 
And this saves us so much time rather than having to sit there and click every single point um, or collect every single point in the field. Now I've gone ahead and extracted the rest of the features inside of the project. If I turn off the dense point cloud and the surface, we can see all of the polylines for the features that we've extracted. Here we have all the curbs, gutters, the parking stripes, and the concrete, as well as the building. Now we're gonna wanna export our project. To export the project, you're gonna come over here to this third option where it says export drawing. You'll click on it, and then you'll select the file extension that you wanna export. For me, I use AutoCAD Civil 3D, so I'm gonna export it using DXF. It'll ask me if I wanna export just the visible features. I wanna export everything, so I'm not going to check this. I'll click export, I'll give this file a name. And that is how you do feature extraction on the survey canvas in Carlson Photo Capture. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.